your second great segue of the day comes to LGBT group in Utah calls bill that requires adult content warnings for public events. Now, this is something I wrote from the blaze. Um, unfortunately, I've been writing a lot about this stuff and child predators lately. There's a lot of arrests going on uh, on that topic lately, federal cases and whatnot. What happened here was um, an HBO show covered a drag show in Utah that happened in a public park. And of course, nor- I'll go with instead of normal, I'll go with like most people. They weren't happy with their kids seeing it. Now, um, what they've done is they've introduced a bill. This guy named Colin Jack, which is a good name. He introduced a bill that says, you know what? If this takes place on public property, so anybody who gets a permit, a permit to conduct an event on public property, it will now have a uh, physical signage that says adult content warning or mature content warning, something like that. If it's at a park or an, a government owned arena. Now, obviously the other side of that would be the government is now deciding what's mature content and what is not. Now, I think that might be okay because this is being done, being done at the municipal level. This isn't the state, the actual physical state of Utah saying we're going to determine it, but each municipal community will decide what's adult content warning. And to be fair, if you want to go and see an event, if I want to go see, you know, a movie, And it just says there's this type of content. I'm still going to see it. This isn't stopping people from seeing it. This isn't putting an age restriction on it. This is literally just saying this is a warning. And and it's hard for me to, you know, say no to this because I know why it's happening. But some some part of me saying like the government shouldn't be allowed to tell, you know, compel you to do it, but then take it to a private venue. This is the government, you know, is saying this is a caveat to doing it on ours. On our property, I get that, but I think I get some solace out of it, knowing that it's a community decision. And certain communities, it turns out, don't want uh, drag shows where people don't know that asses are going to be hanging out and stuff like that. So what HBO did is they filmed a drag show at this event, and there was also a town hall meeting and everything. The event went on, but now this guy is getting support. Where the you know where the glass starts to become clear, you know, on the Simpsons, when uh, Bart rubs the glass with a, with a greasy fish burger and it becomes clear and a bird flies into it is the response from an LGBT activist group. And we're going to show you some of the, the uh, drag Queens in a second, but an activist group called equity, Utah, equality, Utah. And you know, they're honest when they have equality in their name, that's a given every time uh, tries to say that it's about free speech. So they're saying that the, the government venues are going to be sued for labeling things adult content because the people who put on the show are going to complain that they disagree with the warning. Um, but it is, in fact, because of the drag show. So and you wouldn't think that the guy would admit it, but they asked him the, the representative and they said he says it is in response to the controversies. Right. Uh, clarified uh, representative. Uh, Jack, I keep thinking that's his first name. It's his last name. Adding that he like hopes movie, the bill, like a movie character, like an action hero, was it Colin Jack? Yeah, he hope he hopes the bill will save controversies um, while giving the parents the ability to protect their children and either take them to the show or not the show. Like that's the intention. Do we have to believe him? I mean, he probably got calls from some Mormons and stuff like that to say, "Hey, we want to put us, we want to deter people. Parents are angry, so wh- whatever the angle is for him." To, to impress his voter base. I, I understand that. And I'm open to hearing that, but the equality Utah lady, Marina Lowe says it's a trap. That's the excuse she's using is that it's a trap for public enti- entities. Um, when they put it, uh, an adult content warning label on people are going to sue them because they're going to disagree with it. But what we know it is about, which she already said up here, she said that it appears she told the newspaper that covered this or the website that she thinks it's about her, even though the bill doesn't mention drag queen shows. And the guy says, yes, it it is about that. So you're going to see in a second why people have a problem with this because it is a disturbing, a disturbing show. Any thoughts on this, Eric, before we see footage of, you know, these hot dudes? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's come on. You can't play the free speech card at this point in time, right? Like that ship sailed. Cause you, as soon as, I mean, we don't have, 
look, I get it. There's certain things that you can't say, whatever threats of violence and stuff. But even on these platforms, there's no like there's a handful of things that you can't say. Otherwise, you will be cut off. So free speech is done. They can't play that card. That's uh, <laughs> hypocrisy through the roof. That's another another double speak thing. Like the protesters, they're like, we're stopping hate and fear, even though that's exactly what the establishment has been doing for at least the past three years. And um, there's one other thing I was going to say about this, and I lost my train of thought about it. Uh, so I guess just play the video. All righty. Let's go ahead and throw that up there. Tell me if you can't hear it. The drama up top. I wanted to be kind hear of it, nude in it. it. We added like a little panty strap right. to give it a little sex appeal. Like I wanted to be like a nature goddess, really. Wigs and Grace made this incredible. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stop. Pause it. Pause it. It was very. I remember just, <laughs> before before we get too deep into this, um, which this is just brutal. But what I mean, and I know people have used this argument before, and I, I haven't really heard an answer. Maybe you have one, but you can't. You li physically, literally, can't take a kid into a bar. It's illegal. You can't take a kid into a regular strip club. So why is this? I mean, I guess because there, if there's no booze and there's no real nudity, then it's okay. But. Where does the where's the line drawn? You know what I mean? I guess I guess that is a perfect place to play the video and see how far they're going to take it. I mean, if we're talking about HBO, they can show anything. But I guess they don't they're not yeah. really getting naked at these actual shows. It's just a it's there's just they're, ass and and it's, it is adult content though if we're going that route. Like it's men talking about sex and like I get that they're joking and it's supposed to be a presentation, but it's not for kids. It's based on men who get joy out of dressing up as women because they want to be like they see like a, sh a burlesque girl or something or a pageant girl and they're just yeah. like yeah i want to be pretty and i want to have the spotlight on me what i don't understand because we know it's women watching this stuff and and paying for this stuff but i don't understand is why you can't just have a bunch of fat girls dressed up like this and watching them you are watching gross fat perverted men live out their sexual fantasies on stage and you're just like woo this is amazing because i feel like i'm promoting equality now there are girls who liked this stuff before we already slid down this huge slope when it was just like that one show rupaul's drag race and they're just like i like these guys like that james charles is the youtuber is that the youtuber's name the gay guy who did all the makeup and stuff they would say he's great at makeup and uh, like he he explains it really well and it's a gay guy. It doesn't really matter who's putting on the makeup. And to an extent, I get that. But the slippery slope is real, as John Doyle says. And this is where we yeah, are well, now. The, so the slope already it's, we already slipped. We're at the bottom. Well, is there a reason why women don't want to do this? Is there a reason why they can't? There isn't three girls who want to do this. Or is it because that it's guys who are doing it and there's. And that's what I think. It's because they're so brave and I'm well, a just, great person and I'm applauding them. You know, it's just creepy guys. And it, and it reminds me of Senator Scott Wiener. This is what he this is what he's promoting. They, they want it to be for kids. And just really quick, I, well, I definitely want to get into the video, but I don't know if there's a story <laughs> out of Florida where um, where a venue had had their liquor license removed because they got a warning from the DeSantis administration to not do these things. They did it anyways, and now they don't have a liquor license. So that's what's going down in Florida um, because they're, they're actually trying to put a stop to it. And I think that's actually better than these little notices, right? Like these, these little no these signs, this is kind of like gun free zone. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, like it, uh, to, to bring another Simpsons reference into it, there's like, do not enter. There's a sign that says do not enter. And then under it says, Oh, or, or do whatever you want. I'm a sign. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it, no it homers. We're allowed one. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's play the video. Let's play it. Oh my. Very elaborate and just styled right and pulled back with a nice bang. It was just gorgeous. And this like honey yellow blonde. We went really oh drapey with the fabric so that they would flow in the wind and give drama and made like succulent. Shoulder Succulent. pieces that were rhinestone. You can't stop the makeup I did. So here's the thing. This is obviously the only target here is kids. This is not for men. This is not for women. This is for kids who don't know any better, in my humble opinion. Well, because well, anybody who's to, old enough doesn't can look at this and be like, this is gross. What are you talking about? But a kid doesn't know what's going on. Well, um, the thing is they, they are t targeting uh, kids with their content. 
I believe it's um it's Snow White or something they go to that they try to um I forget what it says here. Um I just don't want to skip ahead and lose our spot. But they're inspired by some children's movie, a Disney movie. I know I'm as a trans person, of course, I wanted to showcase that in my community. That's funny. Um hold on a second. It's near the bottom. Almost like French style. We, we talk about see the thing I was getting at earlier though, Eric, is that um if you're being one hundred percent on the other side and trying to play devil's advocate and defending this stuff, you would go, well, look at all the pageantry and look at all the stuff. But what we just pretend that it isn't the factor here is that girls don't want to be mean and they don't want to say that this guy is doing it because he gets sexual pleasure out of it. But but it's true. A guy, this is the essence of losery guys. Like every girl knows a losery guy that they went to high school or college with that, you know, he was desperate for her, her friend or something like that. And he doesn't know how to talk to girls. And, and he spends a lot of time alone and that's what, you know, he gets way too into porn or something and it turns him weird. Like guys know these guys, girls know these guys. And this is, you know, this is what you've allowed to creep into your space, into your bathrooms and all this other stuff. You have allowed that creepy guy that you didn't give a minute to in high school because he was indeed creepy because he spent too much time doing weird things instead of talking to people, making friends, learning how to make life work. You know, and, and you can say they're a victim of something. And if they are, then that's fine. Let's help them. But what this is, is that creepy guy got an avenue to get closer to what he wanted. And what this creepy guy wants is to be known as a pretty girl. And he wants other guys and other girls to give him the spotlight and the attention that he didn't get as a youth. And now the t- the tables are turned and you're paying to see him and he's beautiful and he's magical. And he can be the pretty girl he always wanted to be if he's trans or he can dress up like the pageant model he always wanted to be because he's gay. And this is the thing that the wi- that women who support this stuff don't want to accept. They want to think that it's all about makeup and pageantry and showmanship, when in reality, at the end of the day, it is a guy living out his weird, creepy fantasies in front of you, and you've allowed this, you've accepted this, whether or not you you truly are willing to admit it or not. Now, I'm not saying that we should ban drag shows. It just isn't for kids, just like strippers aren't for kids. So you have to just be able to accept this, you know, uh, the sexuality that is inherently part of it, but they don't want to believe it because just like a lot of other things, people don't want to believe maybe that Trump caused inflation, for example. Maybe you don't want to believe that, but the reality is that there is this degree of creepy sexuality to it. And if you're going to say, if you're going to stand behind and say that you like this stuff, you're going to have to agree that it shouldn't be for kids. I'm sorry. And if you want to say that a man if there's no, you know, sexuality involved in it in his dressing or his what he says or his actions, and you want to see it's just about his makeup and stuff, it's still not for kids because you have to understand how men's minds work. And this is the creepy guy who grew up and he found something that society's accepting him for. If it wasn't this, it would have been something else that became popular. I I feel like Eric. If it wasn't this, it'd be like a, a guy putting a I'm and I'm sure it exists. A guy, you know, putting a dollhouse together and, and petting his dolls. In fact, it does exist. There are super creepy guys who like uh pet dolls hairs. And uh some of them I'm sure are amazing artists and some of them are just creepy dudes, I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah, well I think you're right. And you say like a degree of creepy sexuality, I think it's I mean it's like 90, 99% creepy sexuality and 1% sleeping beauty. Yeah. Sorry to interject, but sleeping beauty is what they went after, went for in this one. So there's three gross, disgusting, obese dudes dressing up as characters from a children's cartoon because when they were kids watching sleeping beauty, they wanted to be, you know, a beautiful girl who is sought after by a prince. You tell me, you're telling me that there's nothing sexual about that when you're a straight woman and you want it. It's because that's what every girl wants is to be a beautiful princess who's sought after by a wonderful man. It's a fantasy story uh, based on the dreams a child would have. When you turn that into a boy, that's a boy who wants to be pretty like a girl and wants a man to kiss him. And like, where are you going to see that fantasy played out in regular male stuff? Eric, are you going to go and be like, 
I want to recreate, you know, Beauty and the Beast in my basketball game. We're going to have a Beauty and the Beast night. And I'm going to dress up like Gaston and the opposing team is going to dress up as bell. And there's going to be uh, the beast is the referee and the mascot. No, you're not going to, as a straight man, you're not going to inject a fantasy of, uh, you know, a girlish (laughs) fairy tale into your everyday life. You're going to do that. If you're a gay guy who looked up to that, the way a girl did, that's just the truth. And people don't want to admit that. 